I'm Warren Spector. I was the uh, project director and producer of Deus Ex. Hi, I'm Sheldon Picotti. I wrote most of the dialogue for Deus Ex. And I'm Chris Norton. I'm the lead programmer and assistant director for Deus Ex. We're going to try to remember how to play, and hopefully I won't die too much. <laughs> it's been 14 years since I've played Deus Ex. I hope I remember as much as, uh, <laughs> as the fans yeah. do. All right, so what skills do we want to start with? Yeah, right at the start, you can, you can select your own skills, so uh, it'll determine whether you're going to be a fighter or a sneaker. What do we want to be? You want to be a fighter. Come you really want to be a fighter. It looked pretty dangerous in front of the statue. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's upgrade it. your weapon skill, I think, because pistol is, is good. The funny thing is, uh, there was talk about cutting the pistol. I, I remember half the team wanted to cut the pistol because it was so useless. <laughs> and it's, it was my favorite weapon. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Well, it's it, was, it was kind of weak, but it forced you to be clever. You had, yeah. to, you had to use it with explosive barrels and, right. and just get really clever with it. It wasn't really high powered, which I thought was a lot of fun, yeah. you know? Your appointment to right. FEMA should be finalized within the week. I One of my favorite lines in the game, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Your appointment to FEMA should be finalized in the week. I still think these cinematics hold up really well. If you disregard the texture, low res textures and everything, I still think like the camera cuts and the panning and everything is really nice. I think we can do a little better on character modeling these yeah, days though. Yeah, a little low poly there. This is all Chris Todd's creation. Yeah, we actually had three writers. You were, you were there for the whole thing, but we brought in some contract writers. Yeah. Right, Chris yeah. Todd, Austin Grossman. I have received reports of armed attacks on shipments. There's not enough vaccine to go around, and the underclasses are starting to get desperate. Of course they're desperate. They can smell their death, and the sound they'll make rattling their cage will serve as a warning to the rest. Mm hmm. I hope you're not underestimating the problem. The others may not go as quietly as you think. Intelligence indicates they're behind the problems in Paris. A bunch of pretentious old men playing at running the world. They set up a lot of stuff in this intro. Yeah, this intro is pretty complex. Yeah. And I think but, it's real time, isn't it? It all, yeah, there's, yeah. everything in the game is real time. We didn't pre-render anything. Yeah. Partially because it would have taken a lot of CD space and we were already maxed out on the CD. It set up the whole business with, uh, with the disease that was being, being, uh, Foisted on the world, it set up ambrosia, the whole uh, yep. antidote to it. It set up that there was stuff happening in uh, in Paris and around yeah. the world. And most people skip these days. People skip gaming intros a lot, and it always makes me sad when I see people playing their own music over the game and not actually using the music, or they just skip through this stuff. Yeah, because this is important to the story. Yeah, as much as cinematics from the line, I think it's the one chance where you can step out of that that linear space the player's in, it's just linear time and linear space and just look at the world around. Right. So this is, yeah, this cinematic does a good job of showing the whole world in the future that you're gonna see. Oh yeah, we set up all the AI stuff in here. Yeah. And the lip syncing is something I'm like super proud of because we had real time <laughs> lip syncing. First game ever, I think, and we didn't pre-do any of it. Uh, it's all actually doing analysis on the waveform as it's being played and it's extracting the phonemes and it's actually trying to match the lip shapes in real time. And part of the reason is because we didn't want to have to lip sync for all the languages with the tens of thousands of lines of dialogue. Yeah. I think it worked pretty well. Yeah. So the, the thing is you start out right here uh, on the first map and there are already choices you can make. You can decide to go down in the water, there are things hidden there. Uh, and once you get up onto the island proper, you can go anywhere. Uh, the, the whole thing about uh, about this game is a lot of people think it's it's uh, all this interactive story stuff and and it mostly is but the the actual plot is completely linear right I mean everybody's going to solve the same problems but within each part of the plot you can do whatever you want that's that's the cool thing like you're on the everybody's going to go deal with the terrorists at the top of the Statue of Liberty but whether you go up there uh, first or you go to Yanatco headquarters first uh, it doesn't matter it's like a little little sandbox you can play in. Uh, and, and explore any way you want. So the, this is this is uh, an actor, uh, Jay Frankie, talking to himself. He did both J.C. Denton and Paul Denton. Uh, I, I felt so bad for that guy because we had to tell him, 
no emotion. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't show any emotion in your, in your dialogue because we didn't know how the player was going to feel. We didn't know what the player was going to be experiencing. Yeah. So we had to do a complete mon monotone like this for the entire game. It was really like kind of sad for an actor. opposite of regular voice direction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's why JC seems kind of callous sometimes because we never knew if the player would want to do a mission. So, you know, somebody asks if he'll save their cats or something and he'll say, he always says something like, I'll think about it or thanks, you know. Yeah. I'm taking the Gep gun because oh those God. robots are not fun. That's what you <laughs> yep. Give me the Gep gun. Wow. So but you could blurry. decide to be totally, uh, totally pacifistic here. Yep. You know, you could decide you don't want to kill anybody. You yep. can decide you're going to be a stone cold killer like you just did. <laughs> well, the Gep gun's really heavy too. It slows you down, yep. so it's not optimal. Oh, the boat! I forgot about the. Boat physics with the rolling in the waves, yeah. the waves that you can't see. Oh, and our very first crate. Yep. Uh, when, <laughs> when we released the game, there was a, a website that, uh, that actually did the time to crate. Time to first crate. And we, I think we <laughs> I think won, we won it. I'm pretty sure we won it. Half-Life was up there too, though. Yeah, but the moment you start the game, you see your first crate. All right. I don't know why I'm proud of that. I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> Inventory Tetris, yeah. Yeah. I still think our inventory system was pretty good. It wasn't ideal, but it's simple. It gets you to what yeah. you need to do. And you have you to think about it. keys. Yeah, you've got to actually make choices, which is yeah, the, the whole, whole point. The whole thing is about making choices that differentiate your, differentiate your experience. So uh, the inventory played into that. Oh, man, I completely yeah, forgot I've, about I all this stuff. <laughs> I haven't played this in so long. Looking back at all this is just... Yeah. The note system. Oh, I'm so happy that we put in this note system. Yeah. Because back in the earlier games, like on the Infocom games especially, you always had to write everything down and draw your own maps, which I still have all my paper maps from all those old games that I made. <laughs> but you had to write everything down, and we got so frustrated by that when we were making the game, we're like, you know what, we're just going to take notes for the player so they don't have to do it. Yep. And I think it was really a good idea. Conversation log, you can look back at everything. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I think we did a really good job There's the, the map your brother gave you. Yep. Albert okay. Russo wrote a lot of the UI system. It's, yeah. uh, it's slick. One of the three programmers on the project. <laughs> you guys were nuts. Yes, we were nuts. <laughs> so let's, let's, go, let's go back over uh, to the island itself. Yep. Let's head over. First, Friendly first robot. Of a, of a bot. Yep. Yeah. And it's, yeah. cursors are green. It's safe. You don't have to worry about it. We did the cursor coloration and all sorts of stuff to help you out. You, before I anybody should, thought about UX, UI, all that you stuff. You know what? I should probably go get this crowbar so I can smash crates faster. Yeah, every game has a crowbar. Yeah, right? you can't you can't play a game without a crowbar. It's just it was, uh, it's crazy talk. Kind of an homage to uh, to Half Life, right? Yep. You got to have a red crowbar. How'd they get one of our agents? Gunter went rogue on us. When the order came, he wouldn't pull back. Now you get to bail him. I don't want to bail him out. Well, you, you shouldn't have gotten you, caught. You can bail him out if you want, though. All right, crowbar, give it to me. Well, the first draft of that conversation had three choices when you met him, and I was going to have three choices every time, so you'd get to develop this relationship with Sergeant uh -huh. Coleman or whoever it is. I rapidly realized that was a little too deep for yeah for, for, the, for the, the very Randall. first conversation. <laughs> if you did that for every character, uh, it would have been pretty uh, pretty maddening for you and for the player. Yeah. Don't hit him. I'm not going to hit him. <laughs> Don't hit him. Yeah, the bark system is another thing that was pretty interesting that we did. If you just get close to people or bump into them, they'll say like random stuff. I, I don't know how you guys wrote so much dialogue for all those barks. That must have been kind of frustrating. Well, the barks were really important, not just uh, they were. As, as random statements. It was, uh, it was all about the NPCs telling you yep. what they were thinking and did they, did they know you were there? Did they suspect you were there? Yep. Were they hostile? Uh, so we were constantly feeding back to the players exactly what the situation yeah. was and using the bark system to do that it was uh it was absolutely necessary i mean frankly we kind of borrowed that from uh, from the thief games which yeah. uh, did an amazing job of that oh our lovely trees oh yeah man oh with the God. light shining through the leaves oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the light blooms oh are you shooting at me really all right well i will uh yeah, i think barks are often overlooked in games these days yeah. i mean there's the ai barks that tell you the state of the game but even just the minor characters in an alley somewhere, so many games just have one or two lines, and it's immediately apparent you're not talking to a person, you're just bumping into an information kiosk. <laughs> information <laughs> kiosk. <laughs> so we always put like eight or so lines on every Run character away. so you have a sense of their whole life. 
right, right from here, you can actually see the Statue of Liberty. Uh, and I, I remember uh, telling Harvey Smith, the lead designer, that he, he and the, the uh, design team had to build everything completely accurately from right. the outside. You know, we had to have people uh, playing the game and saying, I've been there, or, or I could go there. Uh, he, he was really not happy about that. But I told him, once you get inside, you can do whatever you want. Yep. Things might have changed inside all these things, but he built the Statue of Liberty uh, pretty accurately. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. I'm going to, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh yeah, dot shadows. <laughs> okay. This was the pinnacle don't, of tech at the time. Don't, don't show the embarrassing stuff, Chris. Oh, come on, that's the fun stuff. So maybe head over to you and Go ahead. Yeah, and let's, uh, let's peek around the corner. Good yeah. shit. Holy cow. Let's uh, sneak back. So, so here we are at Unatco headquarters. There are terrorists up on top of the Statue of Liberty, which you, you know about. They're, okay. they're, they've been cornered up there by your buddies at Unatco, <laughs> uh, the folks you work for, at least at least right now, pillaging bodies. Hey, that's you think they're terrorists. Yes, you think they're terrorists. Been, yes, think they're terrorists. The, the thing I loved was uh, as the game went on, you talk to the terrorists and you start going, hey, they kind of make some sense. It's all shades of gray. Shades of gray. holding up? Unatco command made us pull back. I guess for Gunther's sake. And What's the deal? Gunther, Gunther. the, uh, the, the mechanically augmented guy <laughs> feels sorry for himself. You know, he's a monster and you're as powerful as he is, but you look like a normal human. <laughs> right, so, so look, here you go. Yep. You get an option right here. To, to say, I'm going to clean this place out. I'm going to kill everything that moves or, you know, we're cops. I'm not going to yeah. do anything. And there are some people who like you, you know, for each of those options. And some people think you're a, an idiot yeah. for taking one of them. So, so I'm going to no right say wrong. I'm taking a minimum force approach, but I may or may not. Ask me. I think we should frag them all. You trespass on UNETCO property. <laughs> See, he, he, he uh, doesn't like you for saying yep. that. When due process fails us, we really do live in a world of terror. Mm. Hey, actually, when we live in a world without due process, that sounds a little scary. <laughs> Not unlike uh, today. This is uh, one one of my favorite little little in jokes. You know, a lot. A lot spoiler of people, alert coming up. Yeah, there's a little little bit of a spoiler. Okay. Welcome aboard, agent. So you go back here, and there's a a, a little com van. Uh, yeah. Go go back over here to the right. And, and on that, uh, this is a locked door, right? And if you use the, uh, the keypad, uh, if, you're, if you've been playing a lot of uh, Looking Glass and Ion Storm games, you know that the code here is 0451, which was first used in System Shock. It showed up in, in Thief. It showed up in System Shock 2. It showed up in, um, in Bioshock, in Dishonored recently, uh, and in both Deus Ex games. Uh, and a lot of people think it was a reference to Fahrenheit 451, the, uh, the Ray Bradbury book. But it was actually just the key code to get into the offices at Looking Glass in, uh, in Cambridge. Uh, but it's in, it's in so many games now. It's, uh, it's kind of the uh, defining thing in, uh, in what we used to call immersive simulations. So did I get a key for this yet? I don't remember. No, Let's see. I don't know. Doesn't have the right code. No. Our nano key ring cheat, so we didn't yeah. have to deal with keys. Well, you can just go in the front, right? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. All right. So, well, so cool. again, you can explore this any way you want. Oh, the little rats. The rats. <laughs> you know, you can, you can go right to the Statue of Liberty like you've been told to do. You can go into your headquarters and uh, meet your boss and, and some of the other uh, UNATCO agents. But there's one really fun thing you can do in here. Can you get in there? Uh, I don't you remember. I thought I got gated. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's locked. That's, oh, no. Uh, Oh no. I still didn't try my key ring though. We did get the player once in a while. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> forced failure. <laughs> or forced exploration. Forced perhaps. exploration. Okay, okay. That's okay. probably a better way to put it. All right, so <laughs> maybe we need to go to the Statue of Liberty and. Uh, so, what do you think? Should we go in the front? Should we try to sneak around back? Uh, I, 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 I want to shoot that bot with an okay. explosive. Right. I really want to. <laughs> go, go for it. He's got his gap gun. He's got I've got my gap gun. I got to use it. With the correct ammo for the gun, I will be using. All right, so so much for sneaking. I'm kind of sneaking. Ooh. Kind of. Yeah, actually, uh, there's a. I'll probably take some of this. There's stuff. a little hiding spot in there in front of the uh, in front of the gate too. Data cube. So one of uh, um, how many thousands of data cubes did you? Run? A lot of data cubes. Which so I got the backstory. 
Oh, he just gave me a login. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're like data tablets. Okay. Data tablets. A big data. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that word. Yeah. And they're indestructible, so it's all the important stuff you need to know. Yep. Can't data pick cube. them up, can't do anything. You can destroy everything else in the game, but... Oh, uh, there's the... Go boom! There you go. Yeah. Okay. One so shot, more bot. That's right. Oh, well, oh. I should probably switch back. Well, you uh, could really do some damage to him. Yeah. Close range, not such a great idea. Yeah. But there's that pistol. Pretty good weapon. Did you not? <laughs> so that's uh, uh, Alex Jacobson, who's kind of your, the voice in your head. You need some, uh, some character to, to sort of tell you what's going on sometimes. Uh, and actually, that's uh, my, out my nephew. Uh, uh, and Walton Simons, who's one of the big bad guys, is a really good friend of mine. So uh, I, I made some of my friends and relatives uh, registered trademarks of, of Eidos. <laughs> All right. They were, so they were really happy about that. I believe that's a turret there, isn't it? That's a turret. And you can see the, uh, the, the cursor right there, the, the tarting reticle. Yep. So uh, you have to wait for it to, uh, to actually close in on something to fire accurately. So there's a little bit of uh, risk involved, a little skill involved mm -hmm. in using your weapons. Also, I think the first, we were the first people that did that. I don't remember any other games that yeah. did that. So I don't remember what the range of this camera is. I don't remember how close I can get to him without him seeing well, me. Well, you can sneak around there and then just to... duck, it, duck in behind it. Or you can, uh, yeah, you can go try to hack that, Mr. Computer Scout. Wow. Uh-oh. I completely forgot about this one. So this was the, uh, is this the NSF-01 one? Uh, Do you remember? I don't give remember. it a shot. I don't remember. It's 01. And smash. The you know the sad state. thing is, there are probably uh, fans out there. Yeah. There you it. go. There are fans out there who know how to play. Yeah, this they're probably yelling at it over the computer now, like, "What are you doing? Oh, oh, this is frustrating to watch." We had pretty good static here, actually. That looked good. Actually, the whole thing looks pretty. Yeah, good. Yeah, I, I, we did a lot of work on this surveillance stuff. I was happy about there this. There was there was some depth in this game. Yeah. Holy cow, we were All right. we were insane. Goodbye, camera. Let's unlock the door. Let's open the door. See, this never worked for me because I never took the GEP gun and that robot would just would just annihilate me. So I used to take the uh, the sneaking path around the back and then do a crazy jumpy thing to get to get <laughs> into the uh, the Statue of Liberty the back way. Crazy jumpy thing. Well, that was the way I wanted to play. Yep. Yeah. Why are, what are I've you forgotten doing? how just how good all this stuff was actually <laughs> and modest like, too. No, I mean, this was all of us working on this stuff together. Everybody's ideas came together, yeah. and it was constant feedback from everybody on the team, regardless of the role. Yeah. Oh, flares. Yeah, I love flares. So, okay. Oh, look at that smoke. Terrific. <laughs> all right. Really exciting. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so even here, this is kind of laid out the way the, the first level of the Statue of Liberty is laid out. Should I try to sneak around him? That's up to you. You're playing. You said you would. I said I would. I wouldn't want to lie, would I? Yeah, whatever. Wait, so you really did decide I to sneak up. I kind of snuck up. Let's see if I can... Uh, I don't remember the patrol patterns here. Scott Martin did pretty much all of the AI in the game, if I'm remembering correctly. It's pretty cool It was stuff. tweaked a lot, constantly changing it to make it try to not feel too robotic. Except for the robots, which we wanted to feel robotic. Well, it's a, it's a real balance because one of the one of the problems in, in making a Deus Ex game is making the AI challenging enough to, to be a threat, but also then uh, if you're trying to sneak to time out, right? Right. They needed to give you warning they were there. Uh, if you accidentally failed a stealth attempt, they needed to sort of back down after a while because if they didn't, yeah. it would just turn the game into no a, a shooter, right? And if I'm telling the game. I want to sneak around. Uh, you don't want to be playing a shooter, so the AI had to be smart enough to be stupid. Yep. <laughs> to give the player a chance to yeah. get back to the playstyle. That's the challenge of AI. Like making perfect AI is easy. Making fun AI is really hard. Yeah. A lot of people think that the purpose of AI is to beat the player, but really, what you want is <laughs> what you want is uh, AI. It's a humane this. approach. <laughs> yeah. But what you want is AI that leaves the player sweating. With one hit point, exactly. you know, it's just supposed to be challenging, not uh, not actually beating the player. It'd be easy to make AI that could beat the player all what? the time. Didn't shake enough? Come on. You know what, okay, though? Just, uh, there you go. The non-lethal approach. Mostly. 
Excellent. Excellent. I, uh, turn on my flashlight. That dynamic light. Amazing. Completely realistic. <laughs> We ray traced every photon in this scene in real time All right, on 386. Don't, okay, don't, no, don't we lie. Didn't. <laughs> How did I just save a screenshot? Oh, F12 must be bound, which is also the augmentation light default key. Excellent. All right, well, I need to go. I guess that really didn't. Uh... You can go. You can go up the stairs, right? Yeah, right I'll in the go middle up in the there. middle. Although, there actually, this, there's another thing here? right back here. Yeah. Yeah, but be careful because right. there are some there are some guys patrolling. Yeah, I remember there. that. Oh, lamb. There you go. Where's the data cube? Oh, that's the one I know that one. Oh, whoa, hey. Okay. Oh, so, laser. Oh, shoot. Yeah. yeah the, uh, these uh, guys a laser, are... an alarm trigger right there. Yeah, I forgot about these guys. Yeah. This is where you uh, actually have to be careful. One of our, our testers actually got through that by moving an explosive barrel over there. And, oh, and uh, yeah. getting getting back a little ways and shooting the explosive barrel w right when one of the bad guys was moving past that opening, and it took out the laser triggers and the guy all at once with one shot from a pistol. I just thought Pretty that was awesome. amazing. I, I I about fell on the floor when I saw <laughs> him do that because uh, I I had no idea that was going to work. Do a little inventory management here real quick. Oh yeah. I don't think I have enough. Uh, I don't have any multi tools. Yeah. Do yeah. I? I don't think you have enough. Yeah. All right, but I mean, you can you can go through there and set up. Like, it sounds like the alarm's already been yeah, set up. Yeah, the alarm's been oh, triggered, well. so it doesn't matter. Awesome laser technology. Hey, that was a, a, a cue that you were going to set off an alarm if you went through it. I yep. mean, we were constantly telegraphing to the player what was going to happen if they oops, nah. if they uh, made certain choices, you know, yep. so they could apply real world logic to solving the problems. That was the whole thing. I, there were, I was so tired of games where. You know, if you see a blue locked door, you had to go kill the monster right. that had the blue key or, you know, arrange all of the uh, paint cans on the shelves to unlock yep. the doors. Like, it was totally stupid. Well, come on, you always have your house locked with paint cans. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was really oh, yeah, a game that did that. I couldn't believe it. You had to arrange paint cans on a set of shelves to unlock a door. More text, yeah. Uh, but but in in, uh, in this game, the, you know, part of the point was you could apply real world, real world logic to solving problems. And half of that was, you know, teaching the player, oh, okay, if I walk through there, I'm going to set off an alarm. Or, uh, hey, here's some glass, I can shatter it. Or here's some glass with some wire mesh in it. Right. So I can't smash that. I mean, you, can, you, you learn how the world works, and then you can, uh, you can solve problems the way you want yep. based on your knowledge of how the world works. Yeah, that's great. I think it's great, too, that everything in the world is interactive. I mean, every object on the table is something you can grab and do something with. These days, with so much it's good set piece that. art, you can't even yes, do that anymore. Yes, dumb props that you can't interact with. Yeah, I always loved these guys, the you know Anna Navar and Gunther Herman, yeah. the uh, the old school augmented <laughs> agents, you know. Uh, and I, I always wondered, you know, how did they feel? You know, they had been turned into monsters to yep. to gain their power, and here you come along, and you know, you're you're kind of a normal looking guy. First thing is to get you out of here. I'll handle the enemy. Excuse that I have forgotten your brother Paul Denton and the infinite power of nano augmentation. <laughs> See, he's, he's, he's just he's just a little bit bitter. <laughs> Go ahead. Advance up the stairs to the command center at the top. Over exaggerated German accent. Yeah, well, awesome. Rusty metal bones. Aw. Hey, I got skill points. Woo. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's, uh, okay. let's, let's head keep, out. Let's keep going. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Yeah, there's a lot of bad guys. What were we thinking making well, the beginning of the game so hard? It was pretty surprisingly hard. But at least we didn't do the cheat where you, like, hide bad guys behind secret wall panels that randomly open and keep respawning and make it impossible. Like, I, I never liked that. I like to be able to strate strategically clear out a section and know that I've cleared that section out. And the thing is, I mean, it really is possible to get through this without firing a shot, you know? Well, we did telegraph to the player how dangerous it is. You know, yeah. So yeah. those messages at the beginning not to go in the front way. So. Oops. Oh, that's, that's not, not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and lock picks. Ding. Look at that. There you go. Uh, what is back Four. here? I do not remember what's back I here. I don't remember the layout. <laughs> hey, more 40s. All right. Ah, oh, hey. multi tool. Yes, I need a multi tool. Every game needs an altered state of consciousness. Yep. It's true. I mean, from, from the, the time of Underworld, you know, where if you eat the mushrooms, uh, the, the whole world starts swimming and the yeah. colors start changing. And 
Uh, in System Shock, you can go into cyberspace, which is a completely different uh, yeah. different look. And in here, if you start drinking, you're, uh, you're you not going to be a, a happy guy, and the world's going to change the way it looks. But look, you're sneaking around. Ooh. You're not being seen by anybody. Air vents are your friends in Deus Ex. Yeah, air vents are great. Yeah, no. Nice way to get around the world. All right, so. We and always go that? dumpster diving. That's the other thing. If oh, you see yeah. a dumpster in Deus Ex, go in there because you know oh. you're going to find some goodies. I forgot about the ATM in the middle of the Statue of Liberty. Does anybody remember the login info here? No, no way. No. Well, no let's, way. Uh, maybe I should try to hack it. Okay. I think we had just seen the Matrix when we did this effect here. Actually, I remember watching all that green text come down. We yeah. did. We were working on we this before the Matrix came yeah. in, and, we and all I could code. think was, all I could think was, they stole our <laughs> stuff. Let's withdraw some credits, so you can go buy some stuff. Yeah. Our awesome interactive hacking interface, which is just a uh, timer. You can't can't do everything 100 percent. Yep. Oh jeez. I thought I shut this guy off already. Apparently not. Apparently I did not. Oh boy. <laughs> Run away! Running away. Running away completed. <laughs> okay. You're getting there. You have a pretty good sense of scale here. Yeah. Ah! Lambs that I love and also hate. Oh, that was a poison gas cloud. Yeah, now. stay out of there. Yuck. Let it, let it dissipate. dissipate. <laughs> Come on. Come on, gas. Go, go, go. I don't have a bio suit, do I? Hazmat yeah, did, suit. Didn't you get the hazmat suit? Oh, uh, that was earlier oh, when okay. I went the back way, because there is one in the back of the house. All right. Come on, just pay oh, gas. That's right. Let's go. That's right. There was, if you go around behind the statue before you go in, uh, there's a little hidden place where you can get yep. a hazmat suit, which will come in handy right there. I seem to remember you can get just close enough to disarm it without setting it off, but I don't want to risk blowing my face off. So, man, that's still gas, isn't it? All right, well, let's yeah. try going around the back then. I think I can shoot it out, right? Can't I? You can. You can definitely uh, take them out. I don't remember if the pistol will do it. I think it would if you're accurate enough. Yeah. Reload. Reload. Did I get it? I think you did. It got rid of it. No, nope, it's still there. There you go. Oh, oh, you stupid gas. Why did we put gas clouds up here? Why did we make any of this this oh, hard? All right, let me there go back around. Can't you go back there? There's another one. We, we booby trapped all of them. Oh, great. Very cleverly, because well, no one maybe, the, maybe the gas dissipated. Yeah, it should be dissipated by now. Oh, I heard a terrorist dude. Hey, what's up? I thought I saw something. See, I thought I saw something. Yep. Oh, my God. They've got, to, they've got to tell you, if you were actually sneaking around, that would have been a cool little alert that they, they might know you're there. Yep. Okay. Didn't we have leaning? Yeah, yeah we did we have leaning. I did. completely forgot about that. It's like, we, yeah, we introduced the lean and system right. shot. No one had done that before. Yeah. Hey so, there, buddy. Uh, we, we couldn't is that explosive? Back. I think it is. Oh boy. That's, uh, it's a gas barrel, isn't it? No, I think it's just a regular. Oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> I <haven't> jibbed him. <laughs> oh, man. We are. <laughs> It's not well, you know. <laughs> some of the point was that it wasn't supposed to be pretty. Yep. In most games, you know, you you shoot something, and all that happens is they say "good job" right. and pat you on the back. And uh, in this game, you know, it, it was it's supposed gritty. to really make you feel like you did something that maybe wasn't the best thing to do. In fact, there was a point. My wife was playing one of the beta builds. and there was a, she was in a place where there were some dogs running around. Wait, did you break and, confidentiality agreement? <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along, um, no, she was she accidentally shot a dog, and the dog like squealed and fell oh, over in the right. spreading blood that pool. That sounds kind of sad. And well, she was so affected <laughs> by it, she never played the game again. <laughs> yeah, at this point, that. things things seem so straightforward. You know, the the terrorists have stolen a shipment of ambrosia, and you know that's that's the cure for the big disease, the what, the gray death, right? Yeah, and uh, everything seems so clear, but as you play through the game, uh, maybe things aren't quite as simple as they appear. So you think you know better than FEMA what to do with this month's Ambrosia shipment? You're too late. It's on its way back to the people, and you can't do a damn thing about it. <laughs> oh, God. Don't send him back in a body bag. In a body bag! <laughs> yeah, but even right there, you know, there's... There's a hint that maybe the terrorists are, are, you know, have a point, right? 
and the uh, the ambrosia is being being used to save the rich people and the important people yeah. and and the, the terrorists are the ones who want to get it back to the people right mm -hmm. uh, the so maybe there's something going on it's yeah. not as clear as you think and, and it's if you set want up to, right here if you want to you can just talk smack and kill them right now and yeah. just yeah. ignore the whole story you can um, or you can yeah. ask more yeah. tell me about the shipment and I'll order the troops to pick you up as a prisoner instead of a corpse ask away we already won this round. Where are you taking it? We're just giving ordinary people the same chance to survive as the bureaucrats in Washington. Yeah. You'll have to unload New York because the choppers would spot you at sea. I think the government made the plague on purpose to get rid of the population growth. <laughs> well, that might or might not be the reason, but uh, you might be onto something. Yeah, we did, we did make a point of putting lots of theories out. You know, every character has their idea of what's going on, and. Very few are really completely right, but it gets the player thinking about what's what's the real story. Yeah. And he set up the fact that you've got to go into the city next and yep. um, well, let's see, uh, see where that the shipment, the missing shipment of Ambrosia is. Okay. Go out on this side. Uh, I'll just keep going down. Yeah. Be careful Ooh. of the guy you didn't knock out. Yeah, he's probably wandering around somewhere, yeah. not very happy with me for. So electrocuting now, him. Actually, do, do you remember, did that unlock Yanako headquarters, now that you've done that? It may yeah. have, yeah. yeah. I think, I think it did. It so I need to go back down there for yeah. sure. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Hey, look. Yeah. You can actually and see it's, around. It's the, the view you would get if you actually went to the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. Man, we really did make a dark game. Everything yeah. is quite dark. Well, it needs to, needs to have areas of darkness so you can sneak around, right? I mean, it's yeah. it's very hard to sneak, at least to make it realistic, if uh, if you don't have shadows to hide. Yeah. It's one thing that I think is overdone a lot is there's so many games now that are just dark and gray and brown and it's, well, it's our so game was kind it of was gray very dark and, and gray. gray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny. I uh, when I was working I on a Disney Epic one. Mickey uh, a few years ago. I told everybody on the team, we're not going to make a gray game right. or a brown game or a blue game. We're going to make a colorful game. Damn Use it. colors. <laughs> you know. Am I on the back? I uh, think I might be you on the are. back. But you can, still no, get, uh, you can still get down there. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right. You can, can't you go down there? I think I just have to go back in and down. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's sad that I don't remember exactly how to get. Come on, when was the last time you played it? It's been 14 it's years since been, I played yeah, this game. It's probably been about that long. I was, I was thinking recently about going back and playing it again just to, I, to see what it I desperately like. want to now. Yeah? If we had a ton of time. There you go, and now your guys now are in there. they're all friendly, hanging out, they cleaned yeah. up. You're not go trooper, don't do anything. Just go back to your <laughs> headquarters, come on. I want to tase him. <laughs> Don't do it. They're the good guys at this part. At this yeah. point. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> All right. See, so I mean, it's it's kind of heavy-handed right here, but one of the things that I think is is really cool about the game is the the world actually notices what you do and it mm -hmm. responds, right? So now there are going to be people here who say you should have killed that guy, and other people who are going to say good that you didn't, right? Uh, you know, the, the situation on the ground has changed completely now. It's all under Yanako control because of what you just did. Yeah, yeah Paul will chew you out here if you kill the terrorist. Right. Yep. But you always have the option. There are no right and wrong answers, yep. you know. The thing, the thing that, I don't want to say it bugged me, but um, there were two things that kind of bugged me in the, in the way people <laughs> played. One was... Most people just sort of played a blended style. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought and hoped that people would just go really extreme. Pick uh, one. Yeah, pick one. But most people sort of played whatever was most uh, uh, straightforward in the moment. Right. And the other thing I expected people to do was just sort of keep playing, um, you know, make their choice and go. And early on, what I saw people doing was they would get to uh, what was an obvious choice point and stop. And go okay, and save the game, right? And then go and try go, one exactly, path yep. and see how it played out. That's and then just go back ingrained. To I know, but it's it was, like, I didn't expect them to do that. They would go back to their save game and try another <laughs> path, and then they would finally decide whichever one they liked better. Yep. But then, you know, at some point, once people buy the game, it's theirs, and it's about you know finding your own fun. Yep. So they could they could go and do it that way if they wanted. But man, it really 
really bugged me. Yep. I forgot. Well, I just stole the, the soda off of his desk, and he's like, what are you doing? Yeah, see, the world notices <laughs> and so responds. Cool. I mean, that's that's a thing in, in uh, most games, especially back then. That's protocol, agent. <laughs> you, could, you could punch an NPC, and they wouldn't even respond. And yep. here you take his stupid can of soda. And mess with his notices. data cube. Hey, look, there's the code. Oh, yeah. So if you... If you're not a hardcore fan of uh, of Looking Glass and uh, Origin and Ion Storm games, you could uh, you could find it there. Yep. All right. So, he wants us to go through the door. Yeah. Let's head on through. Now, here we are in your headquarters. Yep. Uh, boy, it really is drab, isn't it? Yep. That was intentional. Overdone reflections. Ah, they were cool. They were exciting. Yep. They were cool at the time. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's head to uh, Mander Lee's office. Is his down or was it? It was the second floor. The second floor. Okay. Oh, the first mean, day. Does that end the uh, the level if we go to him first or? Oh, let's not. You know, let's not go to yeah, him we don't want to first. Do that. I think you can. Didn't you go talk to Alex Jacobson? Where Wait a minute. Been uh, a wasn't it? Didn't you just walk past it on the right? This one. Just oh no, that's Lee. Lee. Okay, we don't want to go in there. Lee's no, office. no, not yet. Where were the bathrooms, though? Oh, the little, little bots. I forgot bot. those guys. They're <laughs> yeah, they're down. They're down. Yeah. Okay, there we okay. go. Okay. Well, so mine first. The here we are in the men's room. Oh, and we can. Yes. We could actually flush the toilets, and turn on, and everything. This was great. <laughs> Smoking in the boys' room. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a different time, you know. <laughs> we had we had alcohol and cigarettes. Flush. Look at that. The water level goes down. <laughs> this was an M-rated game. So yes, it was. This was amazing. So cigarettes were fun. Yeah. But you can smoke but, them too. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's do a some modifications. Oh, we real can do quick. some augmentations. Microfiber muscle strength. You can do your combat strength up. Microfiber muscle combat strength. Okay, which one All right. do you want? Okay. All right, cool. So now we are truly augmented. And let me uh, modify my weapon while I'm thinking about oh, yeah. it. Doink! Weapon mods. And Increased accuracy the... on your pistol. Yep. So what was... Oh yeah, okay. So I don't know if everybody remembers this, but we put so much detail in the UI, you could actually do column sorting. We had a full <laughs> UI system. We just, we just put, put everything in there. Like the only thing we didn't have was hover text, but we had everything else. It was pretty flexible. Probably a better interface oh than God. than a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of uh, applications now. Forget about games. Yeah. Hey, JC. Oh yeah, the camera behind, behind the monitor. Dynamic Actually, camera like, angles. Yep. You never know where they're gonna pop up. Gunther's knee, in fact, a sticky actuator. So far, I feel more like a mechanic than a doctor. I'm impressed. They actually let you point a gun at people. <laughs> we'll have to catch up later. I've got to leave for New York right away. Could you send Manderley whatever it is he wants? No problem. Listen, JC, okay. about your augmentations. You know they're preparing to roll out the okay, technology. Okay. Click right. through this guy. As long as I don't turn green and grow Don't do this at home. Always read everything for us. <laughs> I'll do that. So I guess we should go talk to Manderly now? Have we done sure. everything else? Oh, good enough. Yeah. Good enough. Well, there's plenty more to do here. A little robot. You can step on him too and he'll run away from you. Yeah, pretty much everybody yes. has some opinion about what you did in the mission or who you are. And right. And develops. You know, one great thing about this this game, I think, is that you come back here several times, and it gives you a chance to develop relationships and show change in the story. All the other right. thing is, there are all sorts of hidden things in here. I mean, the, oh, yeah, spoiler so alert, stuff. there's there's a prison underneath here, and you mm -hmm. find out that uh, some of the good guys are, you know, open to torturing people. And uh, But the coolest thing is, uh, it's much later in the game, but I remember... Uh, reading online a bunch of people talking about uh, this headquarters later in the game and uh, one of them said wasn't it cool when you rescued the prisoner in the jail uh, down below and someone else responded what jail you know yeah so, you can miss that whole thing yeah. some people walk out of Manderley's office and you can follow them and get this whole sequence this whole storyline or just not and it's, yeah. it's kind of there to be discovered. But it, I, I used to get into arguments uh, at, at Origin with uh, Richard Garriott and other people. They, they just believed that if you created content, every single player should see it. Because why go to the effort of creating the content if everybody isn't going to see it because it's so expensive? And I always used to say, no, that's completely yeah, wrong. Everybody. Yeah. You know, you want players seeing different stuff and talking yeah. about the different stuff they, they saw. And this game was all about that. 
All right, so we just loaded up Hong Kong to explore that. I really, really loved the music in the Hong Kong levels. Well, just the, the whole level. Uh, the, the thing about uh, Hong Kong, it was built by uh, a guy named Steve Powers. Remember Steve? Yeah, Powers. <laughs> Steve was uh, a designer. I, I started working with him, I think, in like 1990 or some craziness like that. <laughs> and every game we worked on together, if you ask people what's the most memorable stuff in, in game X, Y, or Z, it's it's like almost always Steve's stuff. He's, yeah. he's like I always wanted to like rub his belly like Buddha for good <laughs> luck or something. He's, uh, he just has a knack for creating memorable stuff. Yeah, I think he gets lost in the places he builds. I mean, he had all this yeah. other stuff that got cut out of here, like the pirate island, oh, God. Kind of like a yeah. whole bunch of stuff done by the canals. It's just this Hong Kong went on forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There was so much to explore here. So these uh, these were the gun. Gunshot sensors, right? The triangulation yeah. sensors. Yeah, in, in Hong Kong, um, you couldn't use any weapons because that would set off all sorts of alarms. Right. So the, there's a Tong war going on that's all been engineered yep, yep. by Majestic 12 <laughs> and uh, and Bob Page and all that. And and so all of the the Tong guys use uh, use swords, right? right. Uh, because they don't want to set off the uh, the alarms. Acoustic sensors yeah, can triangulate the position of where you fire the guns. Yeah. So it can send people in. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the great things about the game is that it relies almost entirely on game systems to gate the player and guide the player. I mean, there are places where there's some logic, but almost always the game systems can break that somehow. We keep finding out players can cut, skip missions and stuff. And it just makes the game feel more connected to the player, you know, compared yeah. to other games, including yeah. the sequel to this, where we would close off areas to be safe so things wouldn't get broken. I love these pigeons. <laughs> more Scott Martin AI here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can shoot them down too, actually. Oh, you, can, uh, you can shoot him out of the sky. <laughs> Remember you told that soldier you'd be peaceful. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But that was a long time ago. That he was, can't remember. That really was a long time ago now. <laughs> okay. And here, you know, I, I, I can't remember. I don't I think this was actually built based on a real place. No, I don't think it but was. But I remember, man, we got so much reference art, photographs yeah. and stuff, uh, to make it look as, you know, as much as we could given our... Uh, our limited capabilities back then, yeah. I guess. Man, we had a lot of textures going on. Yeah, too. we did have a lot of textures. I actually know what some of this means now. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, the lucky, lucky money. money. Yeah, we gotta go down there. Versa life. And that was a crazy place. We have a raid that happens there, and so yeah. all, the, all the characters have to have state for before the raid. <laughs> Uh, when the raid's happening, after the raid, and half the people have possibly been killed. Oh, uh -huh. and women of the night. Man. Okay. Lucky money there back you go. here. Yeah. Oh, where are they going? Where are they going? Convenience store. What's going on? <laughs> Remember, I talked about our great AI earlier. No. <laughs> no. It's an emergency system. It was two thousand. Yes. Floating yeah, on the yeah, steps. It's floating. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Show that stuff. Off. Yeah. Why'd you have to leave your? What the heck? Yeah. What happened? Holy cow! Mm. I wonder if this is after the raid. I don't know. Oh no. Boris. Maybe so. Oh, just go multi. Yeah. It must. Be. Okay. So this is this. Is this post. Yeah. Oh, oh well. man. Oh well. Oh, there's somebody still at the bar. Good evening. Mm. Okay. Cool. We should go someplace else. Yeah. So let's load up the uh, Knights Templar Cathedral in Paris. Okay. Let's hop over and check that out. So here we are. We're in Paris. Um, Paris is uh, where you start to get into some of the Illuminati stuff. Yeah, your ultimate goal is to meet the uh, acting head of the Illuminati who's kind of been displaced or just deposed by Bob Page. Uh, oh. And MJ-12. So he's kind of trying to take the reins back from MJ-12. And the player will have the opportunity to um, put the world back into what it seems like a normal state, but which is run by the yeah, puppet masters. These guys are pretty tough. Yeah, okay. This, really was, this was later in the game, <laughs> and uh, these are the, uh, the, the big-time MJ-12 troopers. Uh, and actually, was it MJ-12 is actually overtly in control of, of Paris, aren't they? Right. 
they've declared a state of emergency. Yeah. So they've got their, yeah. their bots on the street. I don't know quite how they're getting away with that. Yeah. But yeah, but there's... We had justification for it. This is where you start running into the really big bots. The little ones are dangerous enough. But, yeah, the big uh, ones are pretty by, by this point, you better fact. have upgraded your augmentations and figured out how to really sneak or really fight one or the other. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, Always up there. Where? That's right. But uh, the other thing in, in Paris is you, uh, you, reach. you first encounter uh, one of the sentient AIs, uh, I, I think it was uh, Morpheus, an early, a, uh, an early AI uh, prototype for, for uh, Icarus, if I remember correctly. Exactly, a prototype. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it actually uh, sort of rebelled against its creators and started helping you, right? Um, I, you know, I don't remember the entire history of Morpheus. I don't think he ever was a problem. I think he just wasn't quite good enough, so they built a better system. Okay. But he is currently well, tracking man. everybody in the world and tracking their, their history. And so he, he talks to JC and tells him his, his, uh, his life story, basically. Well, the other thing that's kind of creepy is uh, a lot of uh, the Illuminati and MJ, a lot of the AI stuff was about um, tracking all internet communication. <laughs> And, you know, at the time, it's like, oh, that's impossible. That could never happen. And all of a sudden, it's really happening. So it's, it's another way in which I guess we Whoa. predicted uh, what was going to happen. Yep. Okay. This, this is going to be... How about uh, a Gep gun? And do I have a Gep gun? That oh is the God. question. <laughs> I have a lamb, so I can always chuck a lamb at him. That might be a good Let thing me, to uh, do. Let me get to a safe, relatively safe spot while I can check my inventory. I'm not seeing a Gep gun. I am seeing okay. a lamb, so let's. Uh... Actually, I can use the dragon sword too. That, I think that was surprisingly effective against robots. Give it a shot. Wasn't it? Give it a shot. It was a pretty powerful weapon. Oh, what God. are you doing? I don't want to mess with you anymore. Just. It's nice. There you go. <laughs> pretty powerful weapon. I think okay. this is also like fully. I think I, my skills are pretty high at this point. And if you're. If you're playing the uh, the combat Whoa. play style, that that comes in handy. Holy cow! I got a guy up here and down here. Are you kidding me? Whoa, 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 whoa! I don't think I you can get that. Was, get that fell short. Get a little closer. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> also, I remember now. No, don't get too close to the barrels because they burn you. Fire does burn. Oh, man. You know, there was some attention to detail back then. Yeah. Totally this is what we did at 2 a.m. when we were tired of writing real game systems. Yeah. We're like, let's go make objects do random things. Well, not random but things. That's yeah. the key, right? They did logical things. What was this? Credit shit. Yeah, I got more money. All right, so I need to jump down and, hey, look, wine. It is Paris, after all. It is. That's right. Yeah, not a space. Will I, will I die if I jump down here? Give I better shot. take the stairs. Oh, come on. All right, let's do it. Come on. Ooh. Yeah, okay. You're fine. I'm fine. My leg is a little yellow, but, you know. You are augmented. Right? I am right. augmented. Oh, the Metro. Man. Yeah, the Metro would be nice Incoming artwork. Incoming yeah. Oh, Daedalus. That's right. Yeah. It was Daedalus. Daedalus and Icarus, they fused yeah, and they made Yeah, that's right. And Morpheus oh, was the prototype. Really, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna attack me now while I'm trying to look at my pictures on my phone? I really just need to play this again. Yeah, I do too. This is really, really making me want to play again. All right, so he transmitted an image. Let's take a look at it. The cathedral. Yeah, so is where trying to go? Oh, the catacombs, there we go. Oh, go, no, 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 go down to the, the third one there. I'll use the keyboard and hotkeys, which you can do. Okay, you know, go down one more. That's awesome. There I forgot go. all about this stuff. There you wow. go. Let's, let's check this out. Nice. Nicolette Duclair. Go. Cool, all right, let's go down. All right, so we're in, I guess, the, the final level now. Yeah. And this was one of my favorite areas, just for, I think, the architecture and the future lab feel of everything. Yeah. Showed off our cool electrical system, and which was a slight modification of our laser system. It just looked uh, cool. Definitely looks yeah. futuristic and, and big. It it's, an, it's an epic ending to an epic game. Yeah, right? it's, so this is where the player decides really cool. how to tip the balance toward one faction or the other and basically change the history 
of the planet. There was actually supposed to be a fourth ending where you could actually do what Bob Page wanted you to do. I can't remember why, I, why did we cut that, but uh, it was, you were going to be able to, uh, he offered you uh, to, the opportunity to, to rule Europe or something, something right, like to that. To be his yeah, second yeah. command yeah. or something. I've done what you asked. Now what? We have existed in isolation, pure, disconnected, alone. This still gives me goosebumps. I don't know why. <laughs> we are Daedalus. We are Icarus. Yeah, the AI merged and uh, he's now going to this. Yeah, the, the ultimate AI that can change the, the fate of the world. And if I do, what becomes of me? You will be who you will be. We are our choices. Yes. <laughs> we are our choices. Yes. <laughs> that sums up the game right there. This is why I exist. All right. Let's do this. What's happening? Helios! Or on Bob Page. He miscalculated. I know. I know. <laughs> He wanted to be a god and didn't quite pull it off. Mm. See, I mean, with an AI in charge, you know, the world is actually a pretty good place. Yep. <laughs> Little Volterra. Yeah, awesome. Volterra. There closing. you go. So awesome. Good, good job. <laughs> Probably Chris Todd dropped that in there. <laughs> I always love that image too. Yes, the, the, the world hand. with the hand yes, over. So awesome. Yeah. Credits roll. Roll, roll credits. Boy, I haven't watched this in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, it was great seeing the uh, the game again and be reminded of just how much work everybody <laughs> did. The thing that just amazes me is that people out there in the real world still care. They're still playing it. And for me, the thing I'm most proud of is that we were all part of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. A lot of people ask me how I feel about the, the new Deus Ex games. I think they expect me to, to be angry or upset, but yeah, really, why, why would we be? all I am is, uh, is happy and proud to have been a part of it uh, and to see it ongoing. When we were making the game, we had no idea what it was going to turn into, and thanks to all the fans and everybody, like they've just kept it alive, and the new games are awesome, and I'm really looking forward to trying the newest one. It's great to see it cohere into a franchise that continues on, that has a center, and as you know, some consistency to how stories approach and how the gameplay works. Yeah. And we did something really special. At the end of the day, yeah. we did something that was really special. I think everybody looks back on that as a pretty amazing time where uh, we got to do something that uh, most of us don't get to do.